Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today we're jumping right into the video because this one is a bit long and I don't want to make it even longer with intros, so let's get straight to the point. For those of you who follow me on Instagram and Tumblr, you already know that I've launched a big shop update this summer and I took some time to shoot the behind the scenes, so now I can share the process with you. So I wanted to make a spring themed sticker sheet because I didn't get the chance to design it for my last shop update and I wanted to draw flowers, a gardener pigeon and lots of plants and I also wanted to make some cutesy themed stickers because summer is here and I don't usually draw summer illustrations so I wanted to challenge myself as well. I always start by designing the products that aren't going to be produced by me. In this case, I don't have a sticker cutting machine, so I always get my stickers made at the local print shop. And this way, while I'm waiting for the guys to make my stickers, I can simply focus on designing and making all the other products. I won't go into much detail on this video, just because I'm planning to make a full tutorial where I explain all the steps that I take to design stickers and get the files ready for my local print shop. So this time I'm just sharing a bit of the process, but I'll explain everything better in a future video. So I basically draw and paint the illustrations on Paint Tool Sai just because I feel like I have a lot more control over the brushes there. I don't know if you can read my brush settings in the video, but I don't like to use a very clean brush, so I usually play with the fuzz static settings to get more texture for the lines. For the shading and highlights, I use Photoshop with a texture brush. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I draw the cut lines manually in Illustrator. And I really want to make a proper video where I explain all the commands and stuff that I use to draw the cut lines, so please be patient because I usually take ages to edit videos, but feel free to subscribe since I'm hoping to release the tutorial soon. After drawing all the lines, I place all the sticker sheets in the final layout that I'll send to the print shop. This time I wanted to try something new for my clay pins. I usually make all pins different, but a lot of you wanted more of some designs, so I thought about different ways to make molds for polymer clay and I decided to try with silicone. I guess I could go for metal cookie cutters, but since I also wanted to make molds of my wizard frog and wizard pigeon ring holders, I bought a fair amount of silicone and decided to use it for the pins as well. So I made one of each pin design that I wanted to replicate. They need to be baked before making the molds, of course. And I made little boxes with some foam board leftovers that I had at home. 
and these boxes will be where I'll pour the liquid silicone later. For sealing the boxes, I just used a lot of sticky tape, making sure there were no holes where the silicone could escape. After the boxes were done, I placed each piece on the bottom and used that rubbery thing you use to stick papers and stuff to walls to keep all the pins in place. Oh, and it's important to place the front of the pins up, since this is where your mold will go. And I'm so sorry for not showing my silicone brand and mixing process, but filming while working can be a mess sometimes and I probably forgot to set my camera to record at the time, so I don't have any footage. But just so you know, I'm using an RTV silicone, which means it will vulcanize or cure at room temperature, so you can just simply leave it somewhere to cure. And I'll leave the brand in the video description. This silicone is a bit thick, I don't know if it's because it's cheaper, but it cures quite fast, so it's a great option for anyone that's still learning how to work with it. I remove the molds from the boxes and you can see that there are bits of silicone that went under the pieces which I'll have to cut before taking the pieces off the mold. After cutting those tiny bits of silicone, the pieces come off super easy and the mold is quite flexible, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. And now comes the fun part. To make the pins, I simply push little pieces of polymer clay into the molds making sure they blend together and you don't need to use gloves with polymer clay but my hands get super dry after working with it so this was the best option for me a roller to make the clay flat and to make it easier to remove any excess that comes out of the mold.
and the clay comes off the silicone so easily and it doesn't really stick to it. I only have to make a little adjustment here and there since the shape gets a bit messed up when you're taking it off the mold since it's not baked yet but overall I'm really happy with how the pieces turn out and I think it's much more satisfying to make the pins this way. After baking all the pins, I just sand them down to make them extra smooth. And it's important to use a mask on this step because there will be lots of this super thin dust which probably isn't very good for your lungs. After cleaning off all the dust from sanding, I draw on the pins with a light brown pencil. For painting, I use matte acrylic paints since they don't smear when sealing afterwards. And here's a magical froggy! This is one of my wizard ring holders, the other one is a pigeon and you can basically use this pointy hat to hold your rings. And these guys were the reason I bought the liquid silicone, because I'm taking pre-orders for them once in a while and this way I can make all the ring holders look pretty much the same. This time I decided to paint the back of the pins with black to give them a better finish. I like to leave the place for the backing pin and paint it to glue the pin needle directly to the clay afterwards. For sealing I use this semi-gloss varnish by Fimo. I really like the soft touch it gives to the pins and since it's very thin it doesn't leave brush strokes. And since it's not resin, it's way easier to work with and you can simply leave it in any room to dry. After sealing, the colors get even more vibrant and I just need to glue the pin backings. And the ring holders also look even prettier now. One of my favorite parts about shop updates is making all these products by hand and I always like to make a new Mimapan design every time. This time I wanted to include my Sailor Pigeon since it's summer and is also going to be on my new sticker sheets and as a clay pin as well. And like the stickers, I paint the illustrations for the Mimo Pad on Paint Tool Side.
about this, I like to plan my color palette beforehand to make sure they all look nice together. For the shadows and highlights, I use Photoshop. I like to make the shadows in a red color with a texture brush and I set the layer to multiply and play with the opacity. And this is just because I think they look prettier and more vibrant this way. Pages, it's time to make the Mimo pads. And I'm also taking the chance to restock my spring and honey Mimo pads. For the backing cards, I try to reuse cardstock from drawing pads or just any pretty cardboard that I find lying around at home, so they're always a bit different. After joining all the pages and backing card, I press the Mimo pads between lots of books and glue them at the top. Once the glue is dry, I just need to trim off any edges that look less even. using my lovely stamp from No Issue to decorate the back of the Mimo pads. This shower plate is definitely me stepping out of my comfort zone, just because I've never painted sea creatures, but it's been a really fun process. When I think of summer, I always remember when I was little and used to go with my parents super early to the beach. And most beaches from the center and north of Portugal are quite cold and foggy in the mornings and evenings. So it was really cool when we arrived at the beach. But it was also cozy because we would just layer up with shirts and coats and we would take long walks near the sea. And since it was morning, there were all these seashells that were brought to the shore during the night. And it was really pretty and we picked a lot of seashells and yeah. So I wanted to make something that reminded me of my favorite childhood beach and did some research on the sea creatures that you can find at Praia da Tocha and decided to paint a few for my new notebooks cover. I 
painted this with gouache and colored pencils and it took me ages to make all the little details but it was really fun. After scanning each illustration, I made a pattern in Photoshop and printed the covers for the notebooks on a textured cardstock. I used pieces of cardstock to protect the pages when holding them with these clips. For the pages, I am using the sketch paper by Fabriano because it has a nice texture that personally makes me want to grab a pencil and start sketching all over the pages. So I think it works really well for the notebooks. I will be sewing the pages, so I punch the holes for the needle. I use a saddle stitch for sewing the pages, which I've learned from Sea Lemon and I'll leave our video in the description if you also want to learn this method. Also, for folding the notebooks, I made two creases beforehand on the cover paper, one at the center and the other about half centimeter away from it at the right, and I learned this technique from a Pinage illustrator, and this will make some sort of spine for your notebook, which gives it a really clean and nice touch, and I'll also leave her notebook tutorial in the description. And then I just need to trim off all the excess paper to make the edges clean. to round the corner so they don't get damaged too easily. Let's start by checking out the final paints. I think they turned out super cute and I'm so happy that the molds worked well. So now there will be more of the same design available to anyone who likes it. I took the chance to restock our lovely Baker Pigeon stickers and I also restocked the Wizard Pigeons. I've ordered more Shromi sticker sheets and made a new sticker sheet with all the mods from my previous shop update. I think they turned out super nice and will look great on your journal pages. And the much expected sea theme sticker sheet and the gardener pigeons as well. 
I simply love how these stickers turned out. I really wanted to make cute sailing illustrations and I think this turned out really pretty. I also love all the little illustrations on the gardening day sticker sheet and the pigeon looks so thick and cute. Uh, I really hope you guys like them as well. And talking about restocks, I also restocked the witchy time stickers just because I still don't know what I'll be making for autumn so I wanted to get these in time just in case. And here's a closer look at the new Sailor Pigeon Mimo pads. They turned out so nice and I really like the little seashells at the top. And here's our wizard pigeon ring holder. My camera makes the shadows a bit too dark, but it looks really cute. And I'll be making more of these once in a while, so you can subscribe to my newsletter to know when I'll open pre-orders. And our froggy friend also turned out super cute. Here's the final notebook, it has the pattern both on the front and back and I'm not sure you can see but the cover has this soft texture that resembles watercolor paper. Finally, I also added a new print to my shop. I hope you enjoyed seeing these behind the scenes and I can wait to see you soon. Bye bye!